So we're going to start in a child's pose. Just get yourself set up. No rush. Listen to your breath. And your knees can be as wide as your mat or a little bit closer in, whatever feels nice. And take a few more breaths here. Feel free to take a yawn. And you can rock your forehead a little bit right to left. On your next exhale, and you'll press up into your hands and come into an all fours position. And then find your hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. And on your next inhale, we'll arch our back, let your belly come to the ground, look up. Exhale, round your spine, look towards your belly. Inhaling, cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. Great. And just keep going at your own pace. Noticing how you're pressing down with each hand and each foot. Your shoulders are still away from the ears. Face is totally relaxed. Your eyes can stay closed here too if that feels nice. Listening to your breath, following it with each movement. Without changing your speed, take this for five, four, three, two, and one. Then we're gonna do something kind of painful, but fun. You're gonna flip your right hand around like 180 degrees. So your fingers are now pointing towards your knees and then do the same thing with the other side. And if that feels like a lot, you can just open them up to like 90 degrees. So your fingers are then like facing out away from your mat. But if you can do the full way, try it and then take circles with your hips to the right. Gaze is relaxed and down and out in front of you. This is really good for all of our typing to get our wrists open. Elbows can be slightly bent and you can imagine that you're pulling your right elbow away from your left elbow so that your elbows aren't locked. And then take circles to the left. Cool. Yeah, nice. And see how big or how small you can go with the circles. Imagine that you're stirring something up with your hips. One more circle. And then come back to center. Flip your hands back around the normal way and try not to shake them out or anything. Just let everything settle back into the ground. One more wrist flip just because our wrists need it. You're gonna flip your hand so that you're on the back of your hand. And then same thing with the other side. And then you can just rock yourself forward and back. But just notice how that feels. See if you can keep all five fingers of each hand down and have a nice soft um, elbow here too. But get the fronts and the backs of the wrist. So our Wrists are mobile. Take a few more. Still using your feet to press you down. Great. Last breath here. And then flip your hands back around. That's it for that. Just let everything settle. Feel free to just sway your hips from side to side or shake it out a little bit. And then from there, you're gonna come up onto your fingertips. You can widen your hands just a little bit and then step your right foot towards your right thumb. So now you have two like 90 degree angles with your legs. Lift yourself up, lift your arms up, interlace your hands behind the base of your neck and then hug your elbows in towards your chest and just tuck your chin down. And someone else is here, so I'm gonna Hello. We're just in the lounge. Cool. <laughs> Great. And you can even sway your hips side to side here too, or your chin from right to left. Just pressing both hips forward though, because you really want to get a nice opening in the front of the left hip. 
One more breath here. And then reach the arms up. Place your fingertips back down to frame your front foot. Step your right foot back. Just give yourself a little bit of a wiggle roll to rinse it out. And then step your left foot towards your left thumb. So find those two 90 degree angles again. Lift your torso up. Arms come up by the ears. Interlace your fingers and then interlace them the weird way, so the opposite point your fingers on top. Bring them behind the base of your neck, hug your elbows in and up, and then tuck your chin down. Cool. And one side might feel a little bit more than the other. Breathe into it. Pressing the hips forward, chin comes down a little bit more. One more breath. And then reach the arms up on your exhale. Place your fingertips back down. Step your left knee back to meet your right. Sway your hips. Place your palms down in front of your, where they are, up with their palms down, so not on your fingertips anymore, about a palm print in front of where they were before. And then tuck your toes, lift your knees, and then bend your knees and stick your butt up to your first down dog. And from here, really pedal it out. Try to find as much movement as possible. Shaking a leg, shaking an arm, swimming, a head, swimming an arm around, circling your head. Whatever you think a dog would do in the morning when they wake up for, and go for their first walk. Great. Keep going. Feel free to move a leg around here and place it on something. You can try placing it on a couch or a wall and see what that feels like if you sway forward and back or side to side. Take one more breath of movement and then bring your body to a visible stillness, but you still are strongly pressing down with your hands. Your armpits are circling up and in towards your heart. And then there's a nice crescendo from your head all the way up to your butt, which is reaching towards the sky. And then you have a slight bend in your knees and energy is shooting out through your heels. Great, one more breath here. And then begin to walk your feet towards your hands, coming into a forward fold at the front of the mat. And you'll find your feet at hips width distance. So you can measure that out by putting two fists in between your arches. And then really let your head drop. So like there's a magnet at the topmost point of your head trying to connect with the ground. So you're not holding yourself up with your neck. Let your arms sway for a little bit. Let your upper body sway like it's blowing in the breeze. And then widen your feet out just a little bit more than hips width distance just so you have space. Have that bend in your knees if you need it so that your fingertips can touch the ground. So find your left fingertips in front of your face on the ground and then inhale, reach your right arm up to the sky. You can bend a little bit more into the left knee and then twist open to the right. Exhale, swim the right fingertips forward, replace the left and then inhale, lift your left arm up. Just taking these little swim twists reaching the right arm and swimming it down. And you can keep a nice bend in both knees too as you do this, if that's helpful, whatever feels best. Take one more to each side so you're even. Opening up the shoulders, really take up space. And then once you get to the bottom, you can just let everything sway again and then begin to step yourself back into your downward facing dog. Take one breath in your dog once you get there. And then on your next inhale, you're gonna bring your body forward and through to a plank pose. So just find your plank, fidget your feet and your hands if you need to, and then bend the knees and stick the butt up downward facing dog. From here, just step your right foot a uh, footprint forward. So the whole sole of the right foot is down. Your left knee is still in its down dog position. And then you can rock yourself a little bit forward and back. 
just to get into the back of the leg a little bit more. Take two or three more breaths here, it won't be here that long. It's really nice for opening up the backs of the legs. One last exhale, step your right foot back and then step your left foot forward. So the whole sole of the left foot is down. Both knees are still slightly bent, pressing down strongly into both hands. Rocking a little forward and back, or side to side, you can sway your hips too. Great. One more breath. Exhale, step your left foot back. This time, we're gonna come into a tuck-toed up dog. So you're gonna come into your plank pose and then let your hips just drop a little bit. So you come into a tuck-toed up dog and then bend the knees and stick the butt up, downward facing dog. One more time. Inhale, body forward and through to a tuck-toed up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Great. Inhale, lift your right leg up, down dog split. Exhale, bring your right foot to your right thumb, coming into a low lunge. Find your right knee right on top of your right ankle. Bring the back knee down, untuck the back toes. Find your fingertips on either side of your foot if you can. And then reach your arms forward, out and up. So kind of how we started, but this time we'll take a different arm variation. You're gonna grab for opposite elbows and then reach the elbow points up, still pressing the hips forward. And then take a few breaths here, really getting into the front of the leg, breathing into it. One more cycle of breath. And then reach your arms up, fingertips come down, and we're gonna take a little flow just to continue to open up the back of the leg. So as you inhale, you're gonna bring your hips back, lift your right toes up, Exhale, come back to your low lunge. Inhale, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Begin to straighten both legs. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, same thing. Runner stretch, lifting the right toes up. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, straighten both legs. Exhale, low lunge. And just keep going like that on your own breath. Doesn't matter how straight or bent the legs are. They can stay completely bent the whole time if that feels good. I really do like trying to think about having that connection between the right side of my chest and my right thigh though, as much as I can, because then that helps keep my back really long and I know I'm not rounding it. Take a few more rounds. Great. Once you're all evened out, we'll meet in our low lunge, untuck the back toes, and then tuck them again. Place your hands down and step yourself back into your downward facing dog. Inhale, you can come into that tuck toed up dog if you want, or just come to plank or stay in dog, and then exhale, we'll all meet in our downward facing dog. One more breath here, bend the knees, stick the butt up. Inhale, lift your left leg up, down dog split. Exhale, bring your right left foot to your left thumb. Place the back knee down, untuck the back toes. Find your left knee right on top of your left ankle and then reach your arms forward, out and up. From here, just make sure you're strongly on your legs and then you can grab for opposite, opposite elbow. So whichever one, was on top before, is now on the bottom. Pressing the hips forward, which allows your torso, chest, and head to have a nice little back bend and you're kind of looking up where your wall meets your ceiling at that little crevice. I don't know what the name of it is. <laughs> One or two more breaths here. Make sure your left knee is still tracking over your left toes. You can look at it. Next, exhale, reach the arms up. Place your fingertips back down. We'll come into that little flow. So inhale, lift the left toes up. Come back into that runner stretch. Exhale, low lunge. 
Inhale, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, straighten both legs as much as you can. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, runner stretch. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, exhale. But take it on your own time. We all breathe at different rates, so however slow or fast you're breathing today, just go at that speed. There's no rush or anything. And feel free to pause anywhere too. If you like something, you can stay there. Take one more round to even yourself out. And then we'll meet into the lunge. You can tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, place the hands down, and then step yourself back into a downward facing dog. You can rinse it out by going to that up dog if you want. Otherwise, stay in your down dog. Bend the knees, stick the butt up. And this time, begin to walk your hands back towards your feet, coming into a forward fold at the back of the mat. Once again, let your head completely drop as if there is that strong magnet pulling you to the floor. And to give yourself even more of a little boost, you can interlace your hands behind your neck again, any interlacing, and then gently chug your chin in towards your chest. Take a few more breaths here. Feel free to sway your upper body. Bend those knees so you have a strong foundation to stand on. And on your next inhale, slowly, slowly begin to roll yourself up to stand, stacking vertebra on top of vertebra, head is last to lift. And once it gets to the top, you can let your head just relax back in towards your hands. And then let your arms just go, shake it around, wiggle it around, jump it around. And then I know in the beginning, Mel, you should still have your sweatshirt. Uh, do you have a blanket or a sweatshirt with you? If so, great, grab it. And then from here, we're gonna do a little calf stretch. So I would just fold up the blanket or sweatshirt or anything you have as much as you can. So mine's kind of looking like this. If you also have a yoga block, you can use that, but I know that some of us don't have props. <laughs> so I'm gonna place my right foot on my on top of the blanket and then my left my right heel will come onto the ground i'm going to step my left foot a little bit behind me so feel free to move up on your mat if you want to and then i'm just going to bend my knees slightly and then lean over and kind of grab the blanket and like lift it up a little bit more so it's kind of like a gas pedal in a car yeah and then you're just rocking a little bit forward and back, just getting into the whole back of the calf. This is really good if you're running a lot or anything like that. Because the calves are hard to open, but very much related to our hips. If our hips are tight, our calves will be tight. If our calves are tight, our hips will be tight, among other things. Take one more breath. And as you exhale, you can come out of it just as you came in, so gracefully. And then just move the blanket, fold over to the left side of your mat. Step your left ball of the foot on it where your toes are. Heel comes down onto the ground. Your right foot's a little bit behind you. And then you can just bend over. Pulling up the blanket at whatever height feels good. Just take those rocks forward and back. Notice which side feels a little bit more. You can sway your hips from side to side too. Take a few more breaths. Getting into that calf. On your next exhale, 
let it all go, come back out of it. You can shake out both legs, move the blanket or whatever you have off to the side. Find yourself standing, feet at hip width distance at the back of your mat, arms are long down by your sides, palms are facing forward, shoulders are down, crown of the head is reaching up, and then close your eyes for just a second just to notice what it's like to stand on two feet and really notice without being able to see. Take another deep inhale and exhale, optionally setting an intention for the rest of class or the rest of your day. Slowly begin to open your eyes. Inhale, lift the arms up, press palms together, and then exhale, forward fold. Great, you can take a moment here in your forward fold if that feels nice. Otherwise, walk yourself back out to your downward facing dog. Bend the knees, stick the butt up. Inhale, once again, lift your right leg up, down dog split. This time, bend your knee and open up your hip and take circles with your knee and your ankle. Very nice. Take a few more, you can take some shakes, move things around. Inhale, extend your leg back up, hip can stay open. And this time, exhale, step your right foot outside of your right pinky. And it can kind of be on an angle. We're coming into a variation of lizard. So you're gonna place your back knee down, untuck the back toes, and then just come up onto your fingertips if that feels nice, or you can keep your hands down and take circles with your hips in all different directions. Great. Keep breathing. Getting really into the hips to the, and the backs of the legs, because sitting all day doesn't help keep our muscles open and loose. <laughs> Take one more rock roll circle, and then we'll find a little bit of a still lizard. So you can stay like this if that feels nice. You can tuck the back toe and lift the back knee and hold that for a few breaths. Or if it's available to you, you can come onto your forearms down on the ground. Whatever option you choose, try to do something similar once we get to the other side. But there's no rush. And you can still sway right to left with your hips once you make your choice. One more breath wherever you are. Neck is long, face is relaxed, no tension in your jaw. Exhale, press your hands back down. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, and then you're gonna heel toe your right foot so it gets closer to your left thumb. So now your legs are kind of crossed. Take one uh, straighten with your right leg and pull your right hip back just to kind of rinse things out for a second. You can sway your hips from side to side. Fing hands are on fingertips. And then bend back into your right knee. Get a little hoppy on the back leg and then hop your left knee outside of your right foot coming into a seated spinal twist. And if you don't feel both sits bones pressing equally down on the ground, you could also grab your blanket or sweatshirt and sit up on it too, and that kind of helps. But whatever your setup is, set it up, take your time, and then find your right fingertips behind you. Inhale, lift your left arm up, and then left elbow, outside right knee. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist over your right shoulder. And just really find your breath here. Thinking about inhale, spinning up, and exhale, twisting over. Take one more breath. And exhale, come back to center. You can twist over your left side and just take a little bit of a counter strip or a twist. 
And then from here, if you've had the blanket, just remove it so you're on the ground. You're gonna untwist your legs and just come into Navasana. So you're kind of in like a tabletop position. Arms are out in front of you. Take three breaths here so you can go as slow or as fast as you want with your breaths. Just notice. And after your third breath, we're just gonna place your feet down, kind of scoot your butt back a little bit, lengthen out your legs, give them a little shake. And then we're gonna come into a seated forward fold for just a little bit. I like to find my knees slightly bent just so I don't like hyperextend my legs. My feet are flexed so they stay engaged. I'm gonna sit up super tall and from here, this is how I'm gonna forward fold over my legs. You can grab for the outer edges of your feet or if you're already feeling a lot in your legs, you can just stay seated up. But wherever you are, try to close your eyes and relax your head. You can take some nods and shakes And we'll take five to 10 breaths here. You can rock, walk your hips back a little bit if as you are here, gravity helps you get a little bit lower. And as you exhale, see if you can let out a little bit more tension, maybe from your shoulders, maybe from your jaw, maybe from your forehead. Maybe you're letting go of some thoughts that have arisen. And take one last breath wherever you are, even if you didn't make it to five or 10. And then slowly begin to roll yourself back up. You can give your legs a little shake again. Cross your right shin over your left, come over your knees and come back into your downward facing dog. Beautiful. Cool. So from here, you can pedal it out again in your down dog. You can come into an up dog, whatever feels nice. And then we'll come into the other side, inhaling, lifting the left leg up, bend the knee, open up the hip, and then take some circles and shakes with your left knee and left ankle. You can move things around. You can put it on a wall or something like that. And then inhale, lift the left leg up. Exhale, step it outside your left pinky. Set yourself up in lizard. Place the back knee down, untuck the back toes. Left knee still stays right on top of left ankle. You can come up onto fingertips and then take some circles in all directions with your hips and when I come back sometimes my left toes want to lift up that's totally fine if you want to try lifting your left toes up as you come back get a little bit more of a calf stretch you can roll around your head here too as you're taking your circles if it doesn't feel too dizzy great Take a few more movements. And then find yourself back in a normalish lizard. You can stay up on your hands. You can tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Just do something similar to what you did on the other side. If there's another variation you like, feel free to try that. Spine is still super long. Hips are still in the same line. Left knee is kind of hugging in a little bit towards your left shoulder so it doesn't splay out too much. Great. Keep breathing, a few more breaths. Opening up those hips, feel free to still keep some little sways there too if that feels good. And on your next exhale, you're gonna press back into your hands Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Heel toe your left foot over to your right thumb. Once you're there, take a little bit of a straighten with your left leg and pull your left hip back just to see what this cross-legged thing feels like. Take one more breath. 
bending back into the left knee, get hoppy on the back leg, and hop your right knee outside your left foot. Coming into seated spinal on this side, make sure your sits bones are still down. If you need the blanket, grab it. And then left fingertips behind you, lift your right arm up, and then place it outside the left knee and twist up and then over. So nice. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. So the inhale is kind of like a preparation to twist even more. And we like doing twists to kind of constrict things, kind of like you're, there's a bend in the hose. And then immediately once you let the bend go, then so much more energy, water, blood flow can happen. So take one more breath. Exhaling, come back through center. Spin a little over to the right side, take a little counter twist. Come back to center. One more round of Navasana, just to give our core a little bit of love. And you can keep your legs still bent, or if you want, you can try to straighten them. Just three breaths here. Arms straight out in front of you. And after your third breath, you'll just place your feet down. Coming into our forward fold one more time. See if you can take maybe a little bit more of a deeper fold or fold, forward fold here since we've already done it. Set yourself up and then walk yourself forward. Notice where you're making contact with the floor and where you're making contact with yourself. I like to think of finding my armpits to my knees. So when I have a ball and mitt fit between my knees and my armpits. So you can try to think about that and then fidget yourself to a place where that seems more possible. But really just relax your head and neck. They're not doing any work here. They're just along for the ride. Keep breathing. Curling up into a little ball of comfort and safety in this forward fold. One more cycle of breath. Exhaling, bring yourself a little bit out of it. Shaking those legs. Cross left shin over right this time and come back into your downward facing dog. Cool. So from here, if you are near a wall, that's great. As if like your leg can come and touch a wall. I'm just gonna stay here and just touch the window behind me. But if you wanna move your mat so that it comes up against, or comes like in front of a wall, so your leg can kind of be on it, I recommend that for the next thing that we'll do, just cause it's nice to be able to use a wall. And if we're inside, we have walls. <laughs> so that's good. A universal prop. Um, I like to find the mat like almost like 30 centimeters away from the wall just so you have a little bit of space too. But take your time to set yourself up. I'm just going to do a fun little variation of things and then we'll rest. Cool. Great. Okay. So come back into your down dog once you're there. You can pedal it out again. Notice how your legs are feeling. Maybe a little bit more open than when we started. And don't worry, we're not doing like crazy splits today. But I really like this to use the wall because it just gives you a little bit of feedback and that's really nice. So you're going to lift your right leg up, down dog split. And if you can't reach the wall, totally, totally fine. You're going to begin to walk your hands back towards your foot until your whole left foot is on the ground. And there is where I find my foot up against the wall. And from there, depending on your range this morning, you can have your foot lower, you can have it higher, you can have only the ball of the foot on the ground. But I really like this because your hands can kind of be used as leverage and you can rock forward and back. You can rock your hips right to left. 
and you get a nice little variation on a standing split where you can put a lot of weight into the wall so it's not all in your lower leg. But we'll just stay here for a few breaths, seeing if you can move your foot a little bit more up the wall or up or down the wall, just playing with it. Yeah, and feel free to just maneuver yourself forward or back if the wall is too close or too far. Take one more cycle of breath here. And then begin to walk your hands back forward. Come into a one-legged plank, just for fun. And then bring your right knee behind your right wrist coming into pigeon on the right side. And if you have your sweatshirt or a blanket nearby, I highly recommend putting that underneath your hips so your hips can find even more of a release. While pigeon is a really nice place to feel a good stretch in your hips, we want our hips relaxed as we do that. So find something under there if you can, and then just begin to walk yourself forward and down. I like finding my elbows out super wide, forehead can come to the ground. We'll stay here for a bit, so. Letting the energy settle, we just did that little split thing which is pretty energizing and now in pigeon we're kind of in more of a being pose where we're literally just here letting our bodies melt into the ground no stress and I really like to think of my body spreading as I'm down here so I try to think of my left hip pressing away from my right shoulder and my right hip pressing away from my left shoulder. So it's like someone dropped me, a popsicle, onto the ground and I'm melting in the sun in all different directions. Take one more cycle of breath here and then begin to slowly walk yourself back up Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, and then step yourself back into a downward facing dog. Noticing how the legs feel. You can rock your heels from right to left. You can pedal it out. You can come forward to your up dog. And you can move that blanket off to the side just so it's not in your way. And we're gonna come into the other side. So inhale, lift your left leg up, down dog split. And then wherever that is for you, try to wrap your left hip down so that your hips are in the same line. We want our hips square. I know I didn't say that on the last side, sorry. But then begin to walk your hands back towards your foot. Find the wall with your left foot. And then once you're there, you can just play around with the movement, rocking yourself forward and back, side to side. You can walk your hands even closer back to your right foot if that feels good. And from there, you can try to find your head just relaxed too. Wherever you are, make sure that your head, neck, and jaw are relaxed. Great. Left hip is still in the same line as the right hip. And if you try something and you don't like it, then come out of it and do something else. It's really a nice time to play around with what feels different, what feels good, what doesn't feel good in your body, it's just information. One more breath, and then begin to walk yourself back out to your one-legged plank, last core exercise, and then bring your left knee behind your left wrist for pigeon on this side. Bring your sweatshirt blanket underneath your hips so they can really relax. Bring your left hip back a little bit more so your hips are in the same line still here and then begin to walk yourself back down. And really seeing how quickly you can settle your breath. It's all about the transitions and the reactions. A ton of things, good and bad, are gonna happen in our lives, but it's about how we react to them and how fast we can pivot and not so much that the events themselves happen. So coming from that standing split into a pigeon is a great way to see how fast you can slow the breath down 
and really let your mind settle into this shape. Thinking of yourself as that popsicle melting on the ground. Elbows can come even wider so your shoulders can relax. One more cycle of breath here. And then begin to walk yourself back. Tuck the back toes, take your time. Coming back into your downward facing dog. This will be one of your last down dogs, moving the props away. So pedal it out, take something that feels good. Bend the knees, stick the butt up. And then place your knees down, bring them as wide as the mat and bring yourself back into that child's pose. Really slowing things down here. Finding your seat a little bit closer towards your heels. Arms can be as wide as your shoulders or even wider, taking up as much space as you can on your mat. Take two more breaths here. Noticing how your breath has changed from that first child's pose that we did in the beginning of class. And after your second breath, you'll walk yourself up towards your seat, sit to one side, and then just find yourself sitting cross-legged. I know we haven't done that much side body stuff today, so I just wanna give us a good side body stretch before we rest. So you're gonna find your right fingertips outside your right hip. You're gonna lift your left arm up and over, and then just walk yourself out as far as you can go to the right side. Think about pressing down with your left hip. Your face can come and twist and look up towards the ceiling. And then you can kind of open and close your chest too and see how that changes the stretch on your left shoulder. Yeah, so nice. Good. Take one more breath here. And then bring yourself back up Shake the shoulders, roll them around. And then same thing, other side, left fingertips outside, left hip. Reach your right arm up and over, walk yourself out. Yeah, so nice. You can take those kind of inward, exhale. What is the word? These kind of like roundings and then kind of arching. Kind of like cat cows, just sideways. Moving with your breath, pausing wherever feels good. Pressing down with the right hip. Just really feeling the whole stretch from the right fingertips all the way down through the right butt. One more breath. Exhaling, come back up to sit. And then you can roll it around, shake your legs out in front of you. And since we have the blanket or sweatshirt thing, you can find it in its burrito roll again. And something I like to do at the end of class, which is find it kind of like in the upper third of your mat. So this is where your head will go. And then you're gonna lie down on top of it so it's right underneath your shoulder blades, probably where like your sports bra is. So that you get a nice little gentle back bend. Your arms can come out to a cactus or a T, and then your legs can come out to either side of the mat, kind of just letting them flop out. So you're like a little mini star fish with your legs. And if for some reason you don't want to do this, you can just come into a normal Shavasana. Do whatever feels good, or if there's another variation you want to do, you can do that too. Let everything settle. Let your eyes close. 
reason I like doing this pose is it, every back bend kind of gives you a little bit of a push to go out in the world and do things. And I think though towards the end of class, we want to rest in our Shavasana and let all the movement that we just did settle. This is kind of nice because it gives us that little extra sprinkle of I'm ready to go about my day after class. So this is a nice variation on Shavasana if you ever need a little pick me up or wanna be ready to go before afterwards. So we'll lie here for a few minutes. You have no place to be. Try to stay focused on your breath. Let any sounds that come into earshot just pass over you like clouds in the sky. And just let yourself rest. to bring some wiggles back into your fingers and your toes and let the movement travel up your body until it rocks you over onto one side so you're in a fetal position over the blanket so you get a nice little pre-massage on whichever side you choose you can rock a little forward and back another breath here and then using whichever hand is on top you can press yourself up and then you can sit cross-legged either on your sweatshirt blanket or just on the ground try to keep your gaze soft or your eyes closed palms can come face up on your knees for a sense of being open and available for whatever's to come the rest of your day and find your breath here again listening to your inhale, listening to your exhale. Bring your palms to press at the center of your chest. Gratitude to being able to practice together, even virtually. 
gratitude to your body for all that it does for you and all that it's done for you in the past hour. And gratitude to your mind for pushing you through always. We'll end practice with a final bow. Thank you so much for coming.